Let's take this 152 up to altitude and see how many times we can turn it. <laughs> to share with you a, a story that I had as a young instructor that was a very enlightening experience to say the least. Um, the flight school that I was working at was a moderately sized school. The owner of the school was uh, real good friends with a gentleman that we all know by the name of William Kirshner. He's written several aviation books in the Ohio State Press. He would uh, come to our school oftentimes and do seminars very similar to what uh, fast team members do today and uh, his big deal back then was spins and he owned the 150 and he was innovative in his time that he would take yarn and tape it to the leading edges of his wing and all across the top of his wing he had a uh, if i remember the story correctly as he told it in the videos that we watched it was an eight millimeter camera that he somehow another jerry rigged to the top of this aircraft filming the wing uh, so that you could see the responses and a, an aggravated stall which led you know to the spin and uh, he talked about how many turns it would take the Cessna. But what I didn't pick up in the conversations was that, that the aircraft would oscillate, the nose would oscillate up and down. And so um, even though I had spun aircraft as a CFI as part of my training, and I had spun aircraft um, with other students, I had never really dove into the depths of a spin in which he had. So we decided one day what could possibly go wrong. Let's take this 152 up to altitude and see how many times we can turn it. And uh, well, needless to say, it was quite an eye-opening experience because as the aircraft got fully developed and the nose began to oscillate up, my immediate response was, oh my gosh, it's going flat and we're not going to be able to recover from this. One of the other intriguing bits of information that I learned or gained from Mr. Kirshner was is that once you're in a fully developed spin, it can take anywhere from uh, three to five turns to recover. So um, that being said, you don't get an instantaneous response. When you put the input in, the airplane continues to spin, and it's a sit and wait game. How long before it breaks uh, breaks out of the spin? In the meantime, your you know your descent rate is upwards two thousand foot per minute, or you know something like this, because you're coming down pretty quick. Um, so you can imagine, once we got this thing recovered and we're at a significantly lower altitude than we had planned on being at, we were both quite shocked as to, oh my gosh, what just happened? And so we, we uh, flew back and parked the aircraft and went to have a talk with the chief instructor. And so he replayed the video for us and we recanted the whole thing at, to him. Um, and as we began to recant the story, then we began to make the connections between what he had taught us and what was actually going on. And what we were seeing was exactly what he had taught us was happening, and we failed to recognize it. Um, so now, um, going forward from that point, I was like, okay, don't do spins at uh, an unusually low altitude because it could take a significant amount of altitude to recover from that. Mm -hmm.